Okay, <clears throat> I consider this next page to be a work of genius. Um, I'm just super impressed with this and, um, and, and very, very happy uh, that we're doing this. So, the, so we have two proofs. We're going to prove uh, that the derivative of sine is cosine. And then we're going to prove that the derivative of cosine is negative sine. But there's some couple of things that we need to recall uh, from the past. And, um, and they are, uh, one is a uh, trig uh, limit that we used uh, earlier. And if you recall, if, as long as those two are exactly the same, then this limit was one. All right, we'll use that on this one. And then down below, we'll have to use this uh, cosine one. Remember, those two could have been flipped around uh, at any point that you wanted. Uh, this could be flipped upside down. This one cannot because this is zero, and you can't flip zero upside down. Boy, I've made that mistake in the past. Okay, and then I've got to give myself a little bit of a reminder on these uh, a couple of uh, uh, trig identities we have to use on this. And they don't really uh, have you be responsible for a whole lot of trig identities. Uh, but these two we need for this proof. So it's a, a sign change there, no sign change there, a blending here, uh, the cosines together and signs together there. All right. So, so on the, on the, uh, on the, on the, the first one we're going to use, we have a sign change. All right. So, so this is the, uh, this is a sum and difference, uh, formula from, from, uh, Ms. Capp's class from the, uh, trig class. And so this one is it, they, on the cosine one, it keeps them together. So it's cosine X, cosine H, and then a sine change minus sine X, sine H. We're going to use this because, uh, you know, that's part of our uh, limit definition of the derivative. And then over here, it's a blending and you, and you have the same thing. So um, I guess I'll do the signs first. So sine X, and then uh, cosine h, and then you add, and then it is the, the, the exact opposite. So the cosine x and the sine h. Correct? <clears throat> Let me double check that, make sure, because I'm, I'm a little, little wary there. Let's make sure it looks the same. Yeah, so sine x, cosine h, and then and then flipping it around, cosine x, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're good. So those are the two uh, that we need, and now we'll be able to uh, do the rest of this nicely. All right, so so here we go. So this derivative, um, the derivative of y with respect to uh, uh, y with respect to x or sine x, is going to be the limit. And we're doing the h one, right? We're doing the, the regular limit definition, not the alternate. The limit as h approaches zero of <clears throat> All right, here's y2. Already messed up. We're doing the sign one first. We're doing this one over here first. All right, uh, so it will be uh, the sign of x plus h minus the sine of x, all right, divided by h. So that's, uh, so that's y2 minus y1, and then x2 minus x1 is just going to be h. All right, but we have a trig identity, identity for this first part. So that will be the limit <clears throat> as h approaches 0. These are lengthy, so I'm going to break this into two videos for you. And so, uh, so I'm just copying sine x cosine h plus cosine x sine h. And then that takes care of this part. And then minus uh, the sine x. Okay all over h. So they all have a denominator of h. Now, kind of nice. So here, here are the things that we're going to kind of group together here. Um, in, in order to get this identity, I, could, I, can, I can deal with uh, these together. Okay. And then in order to deal with this 
uh, limit, not identity, but this limit, uh, I'll just have that one go together. Because as you can see, um, that one right there is going to be um, the sine H over H is going to be one. So I'll have cosine X remaining. And then all of this other part is going to go to zero. And that's what allows this to work. Okay. So, but let me show it though. All right. So, so we have the limit, the, the purple ones, I'll go ahead and change color as I'm doing them. Uh, H goes to zero. All right, let's get the purple ones together <clears throat> and go, I'm going to go ahead and break it apart too. So purple ones together over H. All right. So, so that would be, um, I'll do the factoring next. So sine X cosine H minus sine X over H and then uh, plus and it's that plus sign right there, right there. The, and I'm going to distribute this limit, the limit as H approaches zero. And this is the blue, the blue part. And that's cosine X sine H over H. All right. So what I do, I took, I took the, the purple ones together over here. Uh, those colors aren't the same, but anyway, and then, and then the blue one straight down. Okay. And then over here I can factor out a sine X, right? So that's good. So I'm going to factor out a sine X. Hmm. How do we want to do that? Um, it's got, since H is going to zero, it doesn't really affect anything, but, but, uh, I'll just go ahead. I'll just go ahead. So the limit as H approaches zero, factor out the sine X. So it's going to be sine x times this cosine h minus 1, because I just took the sine x out, over h. Okay, so you know what's about to happen there. That's going to go to 0, and if that goes to 0 and they're multiplied together, that's going to kill that. But then over here, I can say, all right, well, um, and I'll, just, I'll just write it the same way. So I have this cosine X that's going to be sitting in front of this. And then the sine H over H that's going to go to one as the H goes to zero. That's what, that's what our, uh, our limit says. All right. So, so this is going to be, and if I go ahead and do both of these, this will be sine X because H, it has nothing to do with H, but this is times zero. Right. And then plus, and this one, uh, the, that's going to be cosine X because, again, it has nothing to do with H. But then that's times 1. All right. And so this entire thing ends up being cosine X. So that means then that the derivative of, of sine is indeed cosine. All right. And now I'll just have to be careful with sines, S-I-G-N, not S-I-N-E, on part uh, B. So I'm going to call this... Uh, Example 5A, and then I'll do example 5B in just a second.